Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. You know what? I was thinking just the other day, there's something we haven't done enough of on the channel. We really haven't done enough comparisons between the GeForce GTX 1650 and the Radeon RX 570. Okay, bit of sarcasm there. I almost couldn't, well, I couldn't really keep a straight face during that one. We have done a stupid amount of GTX 1650 content over the past few weeks, but every single test just seems to lead into another one. And while there's been one test that you guys have been requesting ever since I initially tested the GTX 1650, and that is an undervolting comparison with the RX 570. So take the RX 570 and then see if we can starve it down to GTX 1650 levels of power consumption. So this is a more for science type test. We do those every now and then, they're a bit of fun. But yeah, just to be clear, this is not a buying guide and I'm not trying to find a way to justify recommending the RX 570 over the GTX 1650. We already recommended the RX 570 over the 1650 in our day one coverage, and so did something like 99% of all other tech media outlets. So yeah, this is just a for science test, and I'm really just doing it at the request of you guys. Therefore, I whipped out my Gigabyte Aorus RX 570 4GB. So the one with the little copper insert in the back that looks really fancy. But anyway, I grabbed this guy and I started doing some tinkering. So the aim here was to try and get this down to GTX 1650 levels of performance. So basically underclock this card till it's performing similar to this card and then tune the voltages and power target to try and get it, well, get it as efficient as possible while delivering the same level of performance. So that was the aim. Uh, and yeah, that's what we're doing in this video. But I had a few challenges along the way because the asset quality of this particular uh, Aorus RX570 isn't great. In fact, it's uh, it's pretty poor really. So yeah, I didn't win the silicon lottery with this particular graphics card. GPU-Z reports the asset quality to be just 65.5% and that means it's only better than 4.5% of all RX570s in their validation database. So that means it is a bit of a stinker. But for this test, I think that's actually good news, at least from my perspective anyways. It means whatever I achieve with this card will be achievable by almost all RX 570s. So I'd rather test with poor silicon opposed to a model with an asset quality of, I don't know, 90% or better, as that's not really representative of your typical RX 570. I did just recently buy a new 8 gigabyte RX 570 and it has a reported asset quality of 72%, making it better than 30% of the RX 570s in the GPU-Z database. So again, not great silicon here, but it is better than my original model. Anyway, since all the testing for this video was conducted before I made that purchase, I've just stuck with those results and I'd rather show a worst case scenario anyway. So everything you're gonna see in this video will be based on the Gigabyte Aorus model. Using AMD's Wattman, I set the power target to minus 40, the voltage to 1,010 millivolts at state seven with a base clock of 1200 megahertz. Now, if I left the power target unchanged, the RX 570 was still very power hungry and I even found reducing it down to minus 30 had no impact on power consumption. It was like no changes were being made. It wasn't until I hit minus 40% that the power consumption was reduced and quite substantially so was the performance. I was also able to get the voltage down to 980 millivolt, but the system wasn't 100% stable here and would occasionally crash to the desktop. At 1000 millivolts, it did appear to be 100% stable, but for a little reassurance, I left it at 1010 millivolts. I have seen reports of RX 570 owners who are getting down to the 960 to 990 millivolt range, hitting frequencies between 1250 and 1350 megahertz, but they're also reporting an asset quality of over 80%. So that was more your top quality silicon. Additionally, I've also seen a lot of reports from RX 570 owners that could only achieve what my Aorus model does. So obviously just like overclocking, your mileage will vary and undervolting success is very much silicon dependent. Anyway, at 1,010 millivolts and a minus 40 power target, GPU power consumption dropped down to 88 watts. That means a stock RX 570 consumes 72% more power. However, even undervolted, the RX 570 was still consuming 24% more power than a stock GTX 1650. So at this level, you still couldn't run it solely from PCIe power. Still, this is a massive improvement of what the RX 570 sees out of the box, but how much impact does this reduction in power consumption have on performance? 
To answer that, I first fired up Far Cry New Dawn, and here we saw the RX 570 basically matched the stock GTX 1650. So here it was consuming 24% more power for the same level of performance. Not great, but it's certainly not bad for a three-year-old architecture. And of course, stock, the RX 570 is 24% faster than the GTX 1650, though it does use twice as much power to achieve that performance uplift. Then with both GPUs fully unleashed, the RX 570 is still 23% faster in this title. Forza Horizon 4 is a strong title for AMD, so it comes as little surprise that the undervolted and overclocked RX 570 is able to beat the stock GTX 1650. In fact, it even matched the overclocked 1650, and that actually makes the undervolted RX 570 more efficient in this title. Then when we throw efficiency out the window and overclock them both for maximum performance, the RX 570 is 21% faster. Resident Evil 2 is a more balanced title, and here the undervolted RX 570 was 5% slower than the stock GTX 1650. So for this game, the GeForce GPU is far more efficient. But if all you care about is performance and overclocking both, to the max sees the RX 570 win by a 30% margin, making it the vastly superior GPU in terms of FPS performance. Finally, I took a look at the most recently released title that we've added to our battery of benchmarks, and that title is World War Z. Here the undervolted RX 570 was a whisker faster than the stock GTX 1650, but that still makes the GeForce GPU more efficient. But this time we do find when looking at maximum performance, the overclocked RX 570 smoked the overclocked GTX 1650 by an almost 40% margin. Well, there you have it. It is technically possible for the RX 570 to get much uh, much closer to the GTX 1650 in terms of efficiency, but unsurprisingly, it can't match it. After all, it is a three-year-old product. So if AMD were to make a Polaris-based 75-watt Radeon, uh, it would be quite a bit slower than the GTX 1650, but I suppose if they did so and offered it at $100, it would actually end up being a better product. Again, it's the price that's the ultimate issue here. Some of you think I flat out hate the GTX 1650, and that's simply not the case. I really do admire what NVIDIA has been able to achieve here with a 75 watt cap. It is truly impressive. The issue, as I've plainly stated time and time again, is that at $150 US, it makes no sense to buy. It's unsuitable for low powered budget OEM PCs as it's just simply too expensive. And in any PC with an ATX power supply, the RX 570 is a vastly superior option while also saving you some money at the same time. Of course, if there was a $150 low profile version of the GTX 1650, then I could understand the appeal of that product for higher end, small form factor PCs. But short of that, it's useless in my opinion. And you know the second MSI, Gigabyte or whoever else makes a low profile version, it'll cost around $200, making it an even tougher sell. Anyway, not gonna rehash that conversation any further. I think really just the point of this video was to see how efficient we could make the Radeon RX 570. And as I said, it was just a for science type test and really nothing more than that. So yeah, I found the results interesting. Hopefully you guys did as well. And if you did, you can give us a big old thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. You can also subscribe if you're not already to make sure that you catch our other content. And you can support us on Patreon because that allows us to buy graphics cards like the, the eight gigabyte RX 570 that we needed for certain testing. But anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.